Hello there everyone, I'm UXW Bill. Can you believe it's been just a touch over a year since we remodeled the bathroom here? I know, it seems hard to believe. Time really does fly. When we remodeled the bathroom, we put up new lighting, not only in the form of an exhaust fan, but also in the form of an over-counter light. And of course, like most other modern lights, those fixtures both use LED style bulbs. Actually, you could use any bulb that you wanted to in the above counter fixture, but as I recall, it actually came with a set of LED bulbs. So last night I was in the bathroom, went in there, turned the light on above the countertop and discovered that this bulb had packed it in and popped its clogs. And I thought that we would find out just exactly what had happened here like I did some time ago with a failed CFL. Some of you probably remember that video, and the reason why I'm curious about this, a couple of months ago, maybe even more than that, the key keeper had an LED light bulb in one of the outdoor fixtures on his house, decide to give it up. And just out of pure curiosity, I hacked it open. I didn't really feel like making a video at the time. I just wanted to find out what inside that bulb had failed. And it turned out that pretty much everything had. Only two of the six LED elements inside, or LED chips, still actually happened to be in working order. The others had been driven so hard, possibly through early failure of the other elements of the other chips on the, on the bulb circuitry, but maybe just because they were being driven ridiculously hard to get the brightness out of the bulb that the manufacturer had promised. Now, that particular bulb was something of a no-name bulb. It was sold by a company going under the name of Energetic Lighting. This one, at least on the surface, looks like more of a well-known brand name. Yes, that says Westinghouse, although yet again, the here again, the camcorder refuses to focus on it in anything approaching a timely fashion. However, there isn't really a Westinghouse any longer. Westinghouse has basically more or less gone out of business. What we would have called Westinghouse was, for a period of time, the CBS Corporation and the surviving portion of Westinghouse, the nuclear power business, as is actually in the hands of Toshiba, and is why Toshiba is presently teetering on the edge of bankruptcy and is trying to sell off a number of their businesses so as to remain afloat. This particular incarnation of Westinghouse was better known as the Angelo Brothers Company, or ABCO. You probably remember if you've been around at least as long as I have seeing those bulbs in stores, and you know they've been around long enough, so I wouldn't say they were a terrible name. They certainly seem to have an okay reputation. But just like so many things today, almost everything they ever made, almost anything they ever sold, I should say, was made in China. And this bulb is, of course, no exception. So, what I'm going to do here on the video, for your viewing pleasure, I'm going to hack this bulb to bits and just see what went wrong with it. And while we're going down that particular road, we'll get to see what construction methods they used. I was very surprised to see that in the Keykeeper's no-name $3 LED bulb that there was a switch mode power supply instead of a simple capacitive dropper. And I was also surprised by the amount of heat sinking metal they had in there. In fact, the entire bottom collar of the bulb was made of metal. This bulb actually seems quite a bit lighter than the cheapo bulb from the Keykeeper's house. And you can see kind of a dark shadow here. This whole outer assembly is plastic. I have no idea if there's metal underneath that or not, but we're going to find out just as soon as I've figured out what means of violence I shall employ to get this bulb open. You see, these things are not intended to be repairable. They're not intended to be serviceable. You're not supposed to get inside them. You're just supposed to throw them away or maybe even offer them for recycling. Okay, that's it. I've thought about it. These things are remarkably hard to break, but there we go. How many how many hits of the hammer did that take? And I don't even think I broke anything else in here. So let's see what awaits. Well, I can tell you right away the construction of this bulb is actually quite a bit different than the one that was on the keykeepers in the keykeepers porch light. His actually had a tall steel or maybe pot metal tower structure inside that had LEDs mounted, two of them, per face. And I think there were maybe four faces total in there. This one's obviously a little bit different because you just have the LEDs mounted to a flat circuit board-like creation. We must go further. 
This doesn't really reveal very much. I'm kind of disappointed. All right, more violence is simply called for. <laughs> I love the way that just crushed in like that. All right, I'm beginning to see that there is a circuit board in there, but of course it's anyone's guess as to what's actually on it. I don't know that I can get this to come out of here without mortally wounding myself. I shouldn't really do that because I've banged up my one hand pretty good doing automobile related repairs recently. But I'm thinking, at least from what I can see so far, that this has a good bit simpler construction to its driving electronics than the much cheaper and certainly less well-known energetic bulb from the key keeper's house. In fact, I really wonder, I really wonder if those LEDs are perfectly good. I don't think I could possibly hope to find anything down here with enough oomph to light them up, although I might be surprised. We might just have to try that. I guess we'll go over here and this actually worked on the key keeper's bulb. I was able to use a 9 volt battery to drive the few remaining LEDs that were still good. Of course, now the thing I have to find is a set of clip leads. I don't know if I'm going to be able to come up with those right away. Well, I'm back, and as you can see, I have truly succeeded in making quite an impressive looking mess here. I'll start with the thing that I find the most amazing about this particular LED bulb. If you look inside the mangled remains of this housing, you'll notice that the entirety of it is shielded within metal. I was very surprised to see that. That's not something I've seen in any other LED bulb, certainly not a CFL, and it does suggest that maybe this thing wasn't just a nameless piece of cheap crap. Unfortunately, it seems that the failure here was in fact of the LED chips on the board. I have not tried to get this board out of here. I really don't think I can without destroying it or at least significantly damaging it, but I would not be at all surprised to find that each of these LEDs was wired in series with the one next door, and all it would take... There might be a series parallel arrangement here, it's, it's hard to say, but all it would take is a couple of these guys dying out, and if it is a series parallel arrangement, the surviving diodes would be subjected to much more forward voltage and a higher current than they're intended to safely pass, thus creating a domino effect causing more and more of these to fail. But at least they weren't being driven as severely as the ones that I found in the other lamp, which were actually burned black right in the middle of the die. As for the driving electronics, well, as the mangled shell would suggest, it definitely was a little switcher of some kind. I pretty much ruined it when I took it out. There's a little chip here that I can't actually read the markings on. And the one time you'd think the handy cam might focus as proof that hope springs eternal, it doesn't. <laughs> here's, here's a familiar name. I'm used to seeing these in pretty much all of these lighting devices. I don't know if these people cater to that industry or if they're just the cheapest thing going and in this cutthroat market they make the most sales, but this is another ice she cap. Yes, someone just sneezed in here. And since I'm curious about this, Unfortunately, I do not yet have a proper ESR meter to make this test with. We're going to pop that cap right off the board. And we get the thing that I do have. Let's see, 200 volts, 12 microfarads. 12 microfarads. 20 microfarad range ought to do. We'll just see how much of its original capacitance that capacitor actually has left. I'll try to get the polarity at least somewhat correct. I have to fix the legs here. Because they're not really doing too well. Put one on there. Of course, these leads are going to introduce a little bit of difference to the capacitance reading, but hopefully not so much that it throws things off. I wouldn't think so for a 20 microfarad cap. And right away... <laughs> Let's see, it's not a 20 microfarad cap, it's a 12 microfarad cap, and if I could keep my test leads from shorting, the 
ESR and other characteristics might have gone right through the roof, but at least the capacitance rating does appear to be within tolerance at 11.9, 11.09 microfarads. So that capacitor is probably not, you know, not the best, but I don't think it's out and out junk either. There's another electrolytic here on the board, but I really can't get it off without destroying it and you know making a test like that in circuit may skew your results. I was going to try to draw out a little schematic of this for those who would be interested in seeing one but like I say I've more or less destroyed it. I will try to figure out what this controller chip is though and if I get any useful information or leads on that I will certainly update the video description accordingly but for now at least now we know what launched this particular bulb. It was the LEDs that went downhill and that it actually looks to have been a pretty decent quality specimen. So thank you as always for watching, and certainly do feel free to leave a comment if you happen to have one.